a whole chapter. It goes into detail and has pictures and all that, too. But, yes, sir? I'm just curious, when people steal paintings that are worth in the tens of millions, it's well known in many cases which paintings are stolen. Therefore, they can't sell them. They can't make money from right. them. What do they do with them? They just keep them in their home and enjoy them for <laughs> Yeah, that's a good question. Um, well, here, here's what happens. You know, there's a certain there's some groups of collectors and experts that go into museums, that go into these places, and they do steal. And it's because they do want to possess these pieces, okay? Uh, but they're not what we're talking about here. When you're talking about these millions of dollars worth of paintings, you know, these big time paintings, we get 95% of those back. We recover those because you're right, absolutely right. The real art in an art theft in that at that level is not in the stealing; it's in the selling. And then I always said these guys are good criminals, but they're terrible businessmen because they don't know what they're going to do with it after they, they steal it, okay? And that happens over and over and over, and that's why they get caught because they end up doing these sting operations back with the police, and that's what happens. Now, the vast majority, though, we only get 5% of art back that's stolen. Now, remember, I told you 95% of the big stuff, but only 5% overall. The whole illicit art market is about $6 billion a year, billion, not million worldwide and we only get five percent of that back and the reason for that is because we get the big stuff but when they come into your homes and they steal your vases and they steal your paint pictures and they steal you know your memory albums and whatnot and they sell those at flea markets we don't get that back ten thousand dollars and less we, we, we don't recover it. it doesn't come back because we can't identify it. people don't have good pictures of their material they don't have what they call object id they don't have uh, you know they can't describe it and it gets stolen, and it's not unique. A Tiffany lamp, you know, which might be worth fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000, well, what happens is, of course, there's 10 of them out there, and you can't describe yours. So what makes yours unique? That's why you have to do that. You have to do your homework before you, you know, before you put your stuff out. Make sure you have good photographs of everything you have so that we can have a record of it. So that's what we don't get back, and that's, that's really the major portion of the art market that's not recovered. Oh, the big paintings? Yeah, we get them back. That's why it's so unusual that we haven't gotten the Isabella Store Gardner paintings. I mean, it's been 20 years. You know, they can't sell them. So at some point, somebody's going to die, and they're going to show up, you know? And that's how they come back. In this case, they're in a warehouse, we believe. I believe they're in a warehouse in Marseille. But, you know, that's a different story. Um, the other thing they do with them, not so much in the US, in, in Europe, they steal the artwork. And the reason they steal the artwork is because they keep it as a get-out-of-jail-free card. Uh, remember I told you, they're involved in all kinds of crime, not just art. So, you know, when they get caught running a stolen car ring, they break out a few of the paintings that they have in the warehouse that they've kept, and they use those with the police to make a deal. Okay, and that's what happens in Europe. It happens quite often. And that's why you, you hear about these paintings being recovered, but nobody going to jail. That's, that's what's going on. They're making deals. Uh, that last group that I was involved with in Marseille had 75 paintings they wanted to show me. Uh, I only wanted two, the Vermeer in a concert, you know, the concert in the Rembrandt, but they had 75 that I could have bought. So, it's, you know, they put it all together, and they're all loosely, you know, uh, organized. Paris, Marseille, Nice, and France are loosely organized. They all know each other. You know, so if you want the two Picassos stolen three weeks ago in Paris, you can make a call to Marseille and they can put it together for you. <laughs> yeah, no, it's loosely, they, they're all working together. And that's the way it works. Wow. So, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's an interesting group. Not so much here. The United States, uh, we don't do that. It's not a whole lot of art theft from the museums because we've got good security, we've got good police. Police are armed. They're not armed in Europe. And uh, where are you going to go? I mean, you steal something from Philadelphia, you're going to go to Camden? <laughs> 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 no, now, if you steal something in France, you can go to Spain or you can go to Italy and you can get away because you're across the country line. But here, you know, you're not going to go very far. You know, the police can call. <laughs> you know, it works out pretty well. Questions? Anybody else? Any other questions? You want me to get a book? Yeah. You should get books for your for your for your friends too because it's a great Christmas gift. <laughs> yeah, great right. Christmas gift. Do you collect art? Do I collect art? Only stolen. Only stolen art. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, love, I do. I collect a little bit. I'm not allowed to collect a whole lot. Right, right down. My wife's right here, yeah. and uh, <laughs> she has to let me do it. Uh, you know what's interesting? Throughout the year, it's all the different cases. Whenever I learned about something, I had to go out. That was the neatest thing about this job. Was that every time you had a new case come up, 
you had to learn, you know, about what you were doing. I, if I was going to go after Bruegel's, I'd have to go to the museum and find out what Bruegel's look like, you know, what, uh, you know, what, what a wood stretcher looks like with, with those or a honeycomb backing. And I'd have to know what that was because I couldn't go in and not speak about it. Or if it was Native American art in Santa Fe, I'd have to go to the museum at Penn and they'd show me what these things look like. So it was a constant learning experience, you know, which was really neat. But of course, what happened was every time I learned about it, I want some of it. <laughs> so I'd have to have a little collection of it, you know. So my house was full of little collections of things that, you know, that uh, I had cases that were involving those types of objects. Of course, they're all legal. They're all legal pieces, you know. But, uh, but it's, it's hard to decorate when you have all the different types of things. Right? Right, dear? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, that was throughout the years. Questions? Yes, ma'am. Oh yeah, the internet has been very, very, uh, has had a big impact on collecting. You know, the number one, I think the number one complaint for our cyber crime division is eBay fraud. Uh, that's the number one complaint. And, and artwork, quite a bit. Because, uh, you know, people think you're going to get a good deal on eBay buying a Picasso for $2,000. <laughs> uh, the problem is, though, it's, it's a Freddy Picasso. It's not the right... Right name, or if it's a Renoir, make sure it's not like Anthony Renoir. You know? <laughs> Just be smart about it. You know? Don't don't do silly things. Um, yeah, another big thing has been these uh, these cable television shows late at night, and they had these auctions on cable, and you could buy these Picassos for two thousand dollars. I can't tell you how many people come up to me with these certificates where they bought these pieces, and it's a shame because they lost two thousand bucks. I mean, it's you know these are fakes, but you know that's the situation. So you have to really be sharp and be smart when you're collecting, that you can return it to the person that you buy it from, and that the person you're buying it from is legitimate. You know, and you should do a provenance, if you're gonna buy something really big or expensive, do a provenance research, make sure it's legitimate, and that you have good title. Yeah, but the, yeah, the internet has had a big impact. It really has. I, I'll tell you what, too, it's interesting. People get caught selling stolen material on the internet. I can't figure that one out. I mean, why would you go on eBay, especially with archival pieces? There's been a series of cases in the past five years from Philadelphia, individuals stealing from the uh, uh, National Archives here, letters and things from, you know, from presidents and whatnot, and they're selling them on the internet. That's how we catch them. You know, a, a collector will call and say, hey, I saw this piece on the internet, it shouldn't be there. Well, obviously, you know, you go talk to the person, and they were interned at the National Archives over the summer, and they stole 50 letters, you know? Uh, why would you think you could get away with that <laughs> on the internet? <laughs> it's a good one to write with, right? It is good. It's yeah. really good. I'll get it right back here. What was your name? Um, Tracy. Tracy. But don't sign, I haven't decided yet if it's a gift or mine, so okay. you can just sign your name. <laughs> I've already read it. So. Oh, have you? Did you enjoy it? Um, oh, I did. I did. Good. I heard you on NPR, and uh, I was uh, really interested. So it was a great book. Oh, I did enjoy it. I'm glad you liked it. I like the way you portrayed your wife. She's great. Uh, she, yeah, she's great.